Okay, then uh, we introduce the concept of the general uh, z. So where now z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. And if you remember, we call this piece right there as the standard error. And to be able to introduce this concept, we had to talk about the SDM, the SDM being the sampling distribution of the mean. And if you remember, we said if you have a population, so that's a population, and the variable here is x. And if you start taking samples of size n, and every time you calculate x bar, and then you repeat that, you calculate another x bar, and you keep doing that till you've taken all possible x bars of size n. Then you can create a distribution of these x bar, and therefore what you've created is uh, distributions of the means, and this is called the SDM, the sampling distribution of the means, and it will have a mu that we call it to be x bar, and it will have a sigma of x bar. And then we said that it's going to turn out that this mu x bar is actually equal to mu. This mu right here. And this sigma x bar is going to be equal to sigma over root square of n. And sigma is also sigma of that population. Then the third thing we said is that the distribution is going to be normal as long as x had a normal distribution. Okay, now if x did not have a normal distribution, then the sampling distribution of the mean will be normal as long as you meet the requirement of n greater than or equal to 25, and therefore this is uh, the, uh, the central limit theorem. All right, and based on that, we said, well, um, then uh, you would have multiple scenarios. The first scenario is you're interested in only one observation. So you really want to calculate the probability of x between two values. Okay. And then you have two scenarios. Scenario number one, if x has a normal distribution, then you're fine. You can calculate that by, um, by using the z that we covered, which is x minus mu over sigma. The second scenario, we said x does not have a normal distribution. And then here, for that class, we can't do anything. We just stop here. OK? So that's if you're interested in calculating the probability of only one observation. Then the next thing um, is if you are actually interested in calculating um, if you're interested in calculating the probability of x bar. So it's no longer one observation, rather it's a sample. So if you're dealing with a sample, and um, again here you have two scenarios. Scenario number one is that this sample is coming from, um, uh, from a population where x has a normal distribution and uh, of non mu and sigma here you're going to use the general form of z which is equal x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n and you're fine whereas the second scenario if uh, this sample is coming from a distribution where x does not have a normal distribution then again you have two possibilities the first possibility is that your sample size is greater than or equal to 25. If your sample size is greater than 25, then due to the central limit theorem, you can say that your sampling distribution of the mean uh, has a normal distribution, and then you can be back here and use the z. Whereas if your sample size, let's change color. If your sample size is uh, less than 25, strictly less than 25, Okay. Then the central theorem, theorem does not apply, and therefore the sampling distribution of the mean does not have a normal distribution, and therefore you cannot calculate the probability. And so basically this is the, the all the possibilities that uh, we have discussed um, regarding the Z. Uh, we kind of spend a little bit of time talking about the standard error. 
and in less standard error is the sigma divided by square root of n which is the standard deviation standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means and we said that in, in effect what impact the standard error what uh, what affects it is the sample size as long as as, as as the sample size gets bigger then the standard error is going to get smaller and basically what that means if you were to draw multiple sampling distribution of the mean so let's say this was for n equal 10 if you were to increase n from 10 to let's say 15 then the sampling distribution of the mean would remain normal but it would be narrower so here n is equal to 15 and then if you were to increase your sample size to let's say 20 then again it will look something like this where n equal 15 they all have shared the same mu but the standard error is different and basically you'd have less and less of x bars have occurring on the tails and more and more of the x bars occurring in the middle okay and if you remember we call these values that are on the tails these we call them the extreme values and so as n increases standard error decreases and the the, the extreme values the extreme values uh, of x bar uh, becomes less and less likely to occur their probability becomes smaller and smaller all right uh, next we're going to talk about the t